Hey, I'm Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to perform division with fractions. But before we get started, we need to get out our student volunteer of the semester, and that's Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to divide with fractions? All right, let's get started right there. Two. Well, let's take the number two and divide by the fraction one third. In other words, we're trying to figure out how many one thirds go into a two. We can rewrite this problem as two divided by one third using that division symbol. Let's first visually demonstrate this calculation using a number line. Watch. We're trying to figure out how many one thirds go into a two. Here's one third, here's two thirds, here's three thirds. Here's four thirds, here's five thirds, and here's six thirds. So how many thirds go into a two, Charlie? Six. That's right, six of them. So, when you perform division with a fraction, you're usually told to change the division to multiplication and then take the reciprocal of the fraction, or flip it over, right? Let's do that. Instead of having two divided by one third, we're gonna write two times three. But why does this work? Well, I'm gonna to explain to you why this works. When you take dividing by one third and you change it to multiplying by three, what you're actually doing is you're figuring out how many one thirds go into one whole quantity. Because how many one thirds go into one whole quantity? It's three of them. So that's what you're actually doing when you're taking the reciprocal of something. And because it takes three one thirds to make one whole and we're multiplying by two, our answer is six. And that's it. That is a bit abstract for you pre-algebra students, but keep that thought in mind as you progress through your algebra courses. You may someday find it useful. Okay, anyway, so let's move on here. Let's try 7 thirds divided by the whole number 2. This basically means that you're cutting it in half, right? If you divide something by 2, you're cutting it in half. So let's write it using the division symbol, and let's bring up a number line. We have 7 thirds and we're going to cut it in half. Well, to show the middle point, we're going to need a number line with 6 on it, right? Now look here. 7 6 is right in the middle. And if you add another 7 6, that gives you 14 6. And 14 6 is equivalent to 7 thirds. Now, how do we perform the calculation arithmetically? We have 7 thirds and we change it to multiplying by the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. And now if we perform the multiplication, multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, we do get 7 6, which is what we got doing the calculation on the number line. So let's forget about the number lines and let's do some problems, right? 7 fourths divided by 3 eighths. Notice we do not change the 7 fourths. That remains the same, but it becomes times 8 thirds. And now we look for common factors to see if we can cross cancel. 8 and 4 have a common factor of 4, so those become 2 over 1. Let's bring down our work and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and we get 14 thirds for our answer. Let's do another one. 11 6 divided by 10 thirds. We change it to 11 6 times 3 tenths. 3 and 6 have a common factor of 3, so we'll divide that out. That gives us a 1 over 2, and bring down our 11 over 10, and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and we get 11 twentieths. Remember, when you multiply fractions, the denominators do not have to be the same, right? You just go straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Only when you're adding and subtracting fractions do the denominators have to be the same. So remember that. Okay, here we have 11 sixths divided by 22 thirds divided by 10 ninths. 11 6 remains unchanged. Dividing by 22 thirds becomes multiplying by 3 over 22. Dividing by 10 ninths becomes multiplying by 9 tenths. Now we look for common factors. 11 and 22 have a common factor of 11. They become 1 over 2. 9 over 6 have a common factor of 3, right? So we'll divide that out. They become 3 over 2. 
The three tenths have no common factor, so we'll bring down that work. And notice in the numerator, we have 1 times 3 times 3, which is 9. In our denominator, we have 2 times 2 times 10, which is 40. And there's our answer, 9 over 40. Okay, here we have 12 fifths divided by 3 divided by 2. 12 fifths remains unchanged. Dividing by 3 becomes what, Charlie? One third. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, divided by 2 turns into what, Charlie? One half. Very nice there, one half. Now, are there any common factors, Charlie? Yes. The 12 and 3 have a common factor of 3. We could also have done 12 and 2, right? But we'll choose 12 and 3 because 3 is a larger number. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So those change to 4 and 1. And we'll bring down our work. Now, in the numerator, we have 4 times 1 times 1, which is 4. And in the denominator, we have 5 times 1 times 2. But 4 and 2 have a common factor of 2, so let's divide that out before we multiply. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it becomes 2 over 1. And let's bring down our work. And now, in our numerator, we have 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. And in the denominator, we have 5 times 1 times 1, which is 5. And that is our final answer, two-fifths. Let's take a break, and we'll see you again soon.